first it's sour, then it's sweet, and then it's gone. Excellent. <laughs> so today we're making Sour Patch Kids wine. I'm very excited. It's my favorite candy. The process is between full candy and then wine is a mystery to me, but that's why I'm here. <laughs> the process is very simple and very straightforward. We're gonna put them in a pot. We're gonna fill the pot with water till it's covering the candy, and then we're gonna melt it down. So when you ferment a beverage from fruit juice, it's wine. When you ferment a beverage from honey, it's mead. Well, what do you do when you ferment from candy? What's it called? I think the best categorization is tasty. I would call this a kill you, okay? Mm. That is a Finnish type of alcohol that is simply fermented sugar plus water. I thought you were saying kill you, like it was so good it was gonna kill you. Okay, now the reason I say that is because this candy is essentially just sugar with several other smaller compounds. Mm -hmm. So if you ferment it, you essentially get to kill you with some flavoring to add. So that's what I'm gonna go with. Hopefully, if it all works out, this will taste like a glass of that sweet, sour, tangy yumminess. It doesn't always work out. Once you ferment either fruit juice or honey or any type of food, the flavor profile changes. Hopefully we get enough of that original flavor still in in product mm -hmm. so that it's what we're going for. Delicious. That's right. So here are all of the Sour Patch Kids. So I'm gonna open this bag like so. And here's the pot and I'm putting them into the pot. And then instead of using tap water, I'm using bottled water. This is nice, simple, honest, delicious spring water. So basically this is the stuff that Jesus drinks. Now, why? Why am I not using tap water? Well, tap water tastes gross. Our tap water does. This stuff will make the end product taste better. We're gonna give it some time to heat up and boil, and I'll see you in a second. The key here is to stir consistently, you know, because you don't wanna burn the bottom of it. You want the heat to be distributed evenly. There are a few last little chunkies at the bottom. Will those stay? And if it's still a little, it's like it's just a tiny it's a couple, it's just a few teeny chunkies in there. And I may just say we're fine if they're still there in like two minutes because we've been here a really long time. Steven, are you zooming in and out on my face? <laughs> All right, so that took so long. We dissolved like 90% of it. That's pretty good. I, I assume that over the course of the fermentation, those last little gobbles of candy will dissolve as well and get fermented out. The best way to describe the consistency right now is like a boba tea. There's mm -hmm. a lot of little like bobas at the bottom. So what you want to do, because we're going to make a gallon of this stuff, and right now there's only like less than half a gallon of syrup. We're going to add enough water to bring it to a little over a gallon because I want lots, lots of that. Okay, so just pour it all in. Get your water, okay. and we're gonna make this a little over a gallon in total volume. Okay, so our reading is 1.054. All right, so that's that's on the low side for making like wine. Wine is typically above 10% alcohol. An initial gravity of 1.054 only has an alcohol potential of I think six or seven percent. Okay. So in other words, this measures the amount of sugar in here. Okay. And sugar is what becomes alcohol. Alcohol. And you'll never have more alcohol than you give your yeast sugar to work with. Interesting. So 1.054 has an alcohol potential of 7%. What that means is if the yeast eats all of the sugar that's in here, you'll get 7% maximum. You'll never get more. Interesting. But if the yeast peter out soon, too soon, and they leave some sugar behind, you'll get less you'll than 7 So do you use this tool to test the percent of alcohol? Once you At the finish end. brewing yes. as well. So can you add more sugar into here if you want to make I could. it like interesting? That's called chaptalizing. Chaptalizing. Mm -hmm. They do that in commercially produced wines. In some regions it's legal, in some countries it's not legal to add sugar to it. Really? To increase the alcohol. Before we actually ferment it, we're going to see what it tastes like right now. I'm curious too. I can't tell if I like it or not. Yeah. It's not very tangy. It's not very sour. Yeah. It's a little sweet. When we ferment it out, it will taste different. 
and I think it'll come out good. But we can add some adjustments after the fact if we if we want to round out the flavors. So it'll be great no matter what. To answer Steven's question behind the question, I'm not going to add any more sugar to it. I'm fine with an initial gravity 1.054, and we'll get somewhere around six or seven percent. It'll be kind of like a sour patch kids hard cider rather than a wine. That's less than ten. I would buy that. Yeah, I think that's okay. Last time that I made candy wine, it came out smelling pretty gross. Smells like rotten eggs, alcohol, and like a hint of Jolly Rancher at the end. <laughs> to circumvent that issue, we're going to provide organic nutrients with it. Today I'll be using Go Firm and Firmaid O. What these two yeast nutrients are is dead yeast that has been chemically altered to provide the best nutrient profile to yeast as they ferment. For those in the know, this is called the Tailored Organic Staggered Nutrient Addition Protocol, pause name. The yeast we're going to use today is Lauben EC1118. That's a pretty hardy yeast. It's a champagne yeast. Will it have a, like a red coloring? Mm -hmm. It'll be like a rosé. That's, probably That's my favorite kind of wine. Yeah. It's rosé. Now, once you've given about 20 minutes to rehydrate, pour it in. Go ahead, Steven. I was hoping you would ask yes. that. Okay, slowly? Slowly. Gremlin. Okay, not that slowly. <laughs> One of the reasons that I think we got that hydrogen sulfide rotten egg smell is that we didn't oxygenate our musk to begin with. So what we want to do is vigorously shake this, obviously with the lid on here, for a long time to get oxygen mixed into our musk. <laughs> So this here, Stephen and audience, is an airlock that I'm going to put on as I close it up. And what the airlock is going to allow to happen is as the yeast consume the sugar that's in here, they will, pr they will produce alcohol, but they will also produce carbon dioxide gas. And so if you don't have a way for that gas to escape, the pressure will continually build up inside of your container until it, it explodes. explodes. Yes. Wow. So the carbon dioxide gas will go up, push through, and out. And what it also prevents is oxygen from getting in. Because while oxygen is good at the very beginning stages, it is not good once you have alcohol present for a variety of reasons. Miles, what's the next step? <laughs> well, the next step after that is we're going to rack out of here. We're going to siphon all of our wine out of here into a one-gallon glass carboy to let it set for several weeks, maybe several months, allowing it to both age, every kind of those flavors mellowing out and allowing gravity time to pull out any particulates that might be making the wine hazy. And by the end of it, after several months, we should have a crystal clear wine. So for now, we're going to let this ferment. Thank you, Stephen, so much for joining me. You're welcome. I hope I did a good job. You did OK. So you come back, Stephen will come back in several weeks, and we'll pop this open and see what those yeasts have done. In the interim, I will be crying in the corner. In the meantime, for you, go check out more of my videos and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. We gotta be careful not to shake. I I know you're in here tight, my friend. You're yeah. in here tight. Um, so I have really thick thighs, and this is a very tight fit. And over that period of time, it gets really hot in trucks or wherever they're at. They're at. They're... Oh my god! There's a cat over there. You can't see it because it's off camera, but it's little and it's black and white and it's adorable. And the baby it's gonna distract me.